There we go, there we go. Hello friends, storyboard artist Paul here. Welcome to another live stream. Uh, we have a fun live stream uh, session put together for today. Uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, putting your drawings together, uh, thinking about your shots, and thinking about the height of the camera, and also the angle at the, of the camera. Uh, we're trying to tell stories uh, through the visual medium of storyboarding, and uh, there's all different uh, tools and techniques, but we're going over all the basics, and um, I'm so happy you could join us. If you missed uh, this live broadcast, you can uh, catch us on the replay and uh, watch at your leisure. Uh, I'm trying to create some uh, value for you out there so you can learn something as I have fun uh, teaching about all the fundamentals of storyboarding. Anyways, uh, let's get on to uh, what we're talking about. So we've had a couple live streams before already. Uh, we did our first live stream, uh, I think a little over a week ago. We were talking about all the basics of drawing storyboards. We're not looking for f pieces of fine art we're looking for uh, quick sketches uh, so we can communicate visually. It's exciting, like I said before, to be the storyboard artist for a project, whether it be a film, a video game, an animated show, uh, music video, and you're working with your directors and clients. You get to, 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 to be the first person to actually put the visualization of uh, what this possible project or film would be. Uh, you're, you're, in a sense, the director uh, directing through your artwork uh, onto the screen and working with the director and the rest of the team to go through the iterations to bring that project to life. Uh, all the projects that I've worked on, it's all always a, a team approach in term of, terms of what you're doing, and you're doing your part uh, to help propel with the other artists on the project uh, to, to create a film and it's absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm excited uh, to see you and uh, have you a part of the live stream in terms of what we're doing. So we talked about, like I said, the first stream, we talked about the basics of drawing, simplification, silhouette, um, simple shapes, just to get across um, you know, the visual language of what you're trying to do to create a storyboard. Storyboards go through a lot of iterations. They start off as a, uh, you'll get a, a shot list and then you'll go and you'll draw your initial roughs uh, off there. You'll go through a lot of roughs, do a lot of research, figure out how, 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 how am I going to put this together. Uh, you're going to be working with your director or your client and create those iterations and you'll go from those uh, sort of thumbnail sketches um, just sketching out what you think how the shots should be to tell the story. We're in a storytelling medium. And then once those get approved, you're going to go into your roughs. And the roughs are going to maybe be some grayscale to a, you know, a little, little bit more. Uh, maybe if it's for animations, it could be on character um, in terms of what you're doing. And then you would go to your final. Uh, a lot of these... Uh, Art of books will show the final storyboards, and these are a fully rendered uh, sort of concept piece or something for the book. Uh, but most of the time, it's these simpler drawings, and it doesn't matter what you see on YouTube or uh, the, the BTS videos, behind the scenes videos, whether you're watching your favorite Pixar movie, uh, you're watching Mad Max, uh, whatever it might be. Um, you'll see these different art books with these uh, different series of storyboard sketches, but we're here to do the visual medium to communicate uh, what the shot could be like. Uh, and like I said, it's the first time that uh, the director working with you or the client is going to get to see the real realization of your artwork as what might be happening in the final screen once uh, filming's done or animating from there. Uh, we did our second lesson. We talked about our shots. We talked about the, the uh, quintessential shots that we need to know how to, how to draw and uh, from... Uh, when we started out wide, we went from an extreme wide shot, you know, uh, to establish our, our shots. Uh, and as we move forward, we went to the, you know, uh, extreme wide to a wide shot to a full shot, uh, showing the whole body from head to toe, showing your character in there. And as we go closer and closer into that close up, uh, where, you know, like they always say, uh, the, the, the window into the soul is through the eyes. And that's where your actors and your talent are doing such a fine job. This is this subtle little 
winks or nods or whatever it might be that, that you love your favorite actor doing and uh, you would capture that in your close-up shot. So um, usually most of the time you're doing a lot of medium shots, uh, over the shoulder shots or whatever it might be. Um, we also talked about uh, sort of the, the, those breakaway shots too. So you have that you know, extreme close-up, uh, you know, whether it be eyes, uh, mouth, lips, or if we're trying to shoot off to, 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 to show an item or something that pushes the story along. Every time we're doing some sort of board, we're trying to push that story along. You know, we create a shot. A uh, shot becomes a sequence, sequence becomes a scene, the scenes all put together become a film. Um, usually on projects there's either, uh, if there, it depends on the budget, maybe there's one story art, storyboard artist or there might be a whole team and the team is directing to their storyboard uh, art, you know, their supervisor, the storyboard team supervisor, whatever it might be, and everybody's working on uh, their various different shots or they're working on their various different uh, uh, you know, uh, scenes that they're working on within there. So um, usually, not, it's not all the case on big budget features that you're you're, you're doing everything. Uh, once in a while, if it's a indie film or something small, you might be doing everything. But you usually work with a team of fantastic artists out there that are just uh, they blow my mind uh, of what great talent is out there. All filmmakers in their own right creating these visuals to tell these stories. Uh, if you're watching, say hi in the chat. I'll try to peer off every now and then to say hello. Uh, it's, it's late over here in Pennsylvania. It's a little past 11, so I appreciate you joining, whether you're on the East Coast, West Coast, in the United States, or somewhere else in the world. Hello, and thanks for joining me. So uh, today we're going to be talking about um, how do we produce story with the height of the camera? Everything we're going to be talking about today is about the camera. Um, where is the camera in the height um, in terms of the shot? Uh, where do we place that on our subject? Where, how do we tell the story? How do we evoke emotion? Uh, how, how do we, uh, you know, when we're talking about the angle of the camera too. So we're going to go into each of those features uh, this evening, sort of draw them out together and sort of go from there and have some fun with it. So if you have anything, ask some questions over there, let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, let me get into here. Uh, the tool I'm using is Photoshop. So let me get into Photoshop here. Let me get this opened up. Get this fired up and let's get started drawing. Get this so we can see it. We have our frame. I sort of have some uh, panels that I've already created here. Not necessarily panels, but uh, shots uh, for my picture frame here. We'll sort of go from there. Let me just make sure that we can see that fantastically. Okay, we can see it. Great. Okay, go back into Photoshop. Everything's hunky dory. We're working. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about when we're talking about uh, shots and angles in terms of what we're trying to do and execute. Um, use your, we're using our shot size, um, that picture frame to isolate what, what is that shot. We, you're drawing what the audience is going to see. You're drawing what the camera is picking up. That's where storyboard is, is so interesting uh, to me personally because you're, you're, you're creating those shots. You're, you know, you sit there and watch your favorite movie, uh, whether it be the good, the bad, the ugly, uh, and uh, you're seeing that end sequence, that, that last duel uh, between the actors. You know, you have uh, Lee Van Cleef, you have Eli Wallach, you have Clint Eastwood all uh, ready to duke it out in the final shot. How, how did Sergio Leone create that, that, that intenseness, you know, with his, his close-ups and how he shot, you know, with his um, wide shots or the cowboy shot. So um, we're taking it from here is where are we going to place the camera? Uh, both on its tilt axis and how, how are we going to put it up and down if it was on a tripod in terms of what we're looking for. Um, when, you're, when you're using the, the height and the tilt of the camera, you're, you're sort of, it's not just seeing the picture, but 
how are you as the audience? How are you as the viewer? How, how are you perceiving them? Are they weak? Are they strong? Uh, are they against all odds? Are, are they frustrated or bewildered? Um, are they sad? Um, um, you know, and, and or is it just a normal conversation where there's where there's nothing going on? Uh, we tend to judge as an audience, and the director with this, uh, the, the the director of photography, um, the DP, the director, uh, uh, they're working together, and, and you're trying to. To, to evoke those emotions. How should I feel? Uh, sometimes it's spelled out for you how you should feel. And other times it's left for you to question. And it depends on the, the creative art of the filmmaker and what they're trying to accomplish and what they're trying to message through their film uh, in terms of what we're doing. But it, it's what we're trying to do right now is how, how do we perceive, you know, and that's where uh, when we start moving the camera around, it's like, how, how are we perceiving that film? Uh, later, we'll talk about, in a future live stream, we'll talk about um, um, our lenses, depth of field, movement of that camera, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, rack focus, you know, uh, you know, or, or this type of, or pan or something like that. We'll talk about the movement. But here, we're just talking about the isolated camera and sort of where, where is it. Uh, so let's get some uh, sketching in here and get into our first... Um, our first angle of shots of what we're trying to talk about. So everything I'm talking about today, let's get some, get over here, get later on here. So what I'm talking about right now is just our camera in terms of what we're doing. We have a camera, you know, uh, when we're making a film, it's usually on a tripod of some sort and we're trying to, to get that camera. Let's just say it's a movie camera and you're shooting that film across. Um, we're looking at two different things um, in this camera. We're either talking about moving the camera up or down. How is that camera going up and down? Or we talk about, let me just throw a little quick little selection over there. Or we're talking about how are we rotating that camera? These are the two functions that we're looking at right now and what we're talking about tonight and sort of spending the time together to talk about. So again, it's the height of the camera. Where is it in relationship to what it's shooting? And then two, uh, it's going to be uh, what is the tilt of that camera? How are we doing that? Because, you know, what are we doing? And what is the, ev what is the emotion or what are we trying to say by doing that? And we're going to fix that in a visual style in terms of what we're drawing here. So I appreciate all those that are joining me right now. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so let's just say we have some, some talent here uh, that, that's here. That person's here in terms of the, of the shot. And uh, we're looking at that. And how, how do we put that camera? Are we eye level? Are we chest level? Are we hip level? Are we knee level? Are we foot level? How, how are we putting those, those together? And then also moving that camera around in the shot, uh, you'll get different perspectives. And this is the physical reality of what we're trying to do. But we have to think as artists and the artistry of what we're doing into how, how do we draw that. So uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. Turn this on. Go like that. Let me get some color on here. I hope everybody's having a great night. It's a uh, Tuesday or still Tuesday for a little bit more over here in Pennsylvania, but uh, I hope you're doing great tonight. Okay, so let's talk about our first shot. Let's talk about first shot we're going to be talking about today is a low angle shot. Okay, that's going to be the first shot. And, and sort of what we're trying to do is you have your low angle shot, and what that is is okay. Here's your sort of horizon line, and that low angle is you're looking up this way. The camera is here. You're, you're, here's your camera, and it's on the tripod. And what you're doing is your camera is below the horizon line, the below uh, eye level of what you're trying to do. So what does that shot look like when we're looking up at it? Okay, and um, that that sort of how we're playing around with this right now. So how do we visually 
demonstrate that, that low angle shot. So let's just sort of move this out of the way. I'm going to leave these scribble notes to the side, so if we need to bring them back for ourselves, we could talk about it. Um, low angle shot is a popular shot. Uh, it's the hero shot. It's the, you know, when you're seeing uh, Hugh Jackman as, as Wolverine or, uh, you know, uh, there's the superhero there, or it might just be the, the victor. It's Maximus from Gladiator, Russell Crowe, or whoever the actor might be. It might be, you know, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman or whoever it might be. It's, it's that hero shot. Or it just might be just a normal person that, that did extraordinary things. And we're sort of looking up to him, and it shows a, a strength of power. So how, how do we draw that? How do we show that, you know? So, so if I'm looking there and we were talking about our basic shapes in terms of what we're doing, put that selection off. Okay, it's, it's, that, it's that power play. So if we're looking at it, it's like, the, so if I have a superhero, I'm going to have that chest right there. I'm going to have the smaller head because I'm looking at him, uh, you know, at this, this person. I'm going to be looking at that hero. And they're going to be right there, and they're going to be massive, and they're going to be... It's that superhero shot, you know, how do, how do, how do it makes me feel... It's like I got the Dwayne the Rock Johnson or whoever I'm looking at, and you got that hero shot, and it's you know right here that person's right here, whether it be Batman or whoever it is, it's that hero shot in terms of what we're trying to do. So we're just doing those simple those those simple lines here throw a little gray on there too to just make this pop out of what we're trying to explain here. So, but uh, that's all it is. It's that hero shot. And you can go more extreme, less extreme, whatever it might be in terms of what you're doing. It's, but it's that hero. It's like everything is going to that hero and it's like, oh, there he is. It's whoever it might be. So, and that's sort of what we're looking at right now is that hero shot. Um, it's, it's a low angle. So when the camera is down, it, the, here's the actor. The camera is below that actor and shooting up. And that's what, we're well, that, that's what we're showing right now. It's that low angle shot of what we're trying to do. Um, where's my notes here? So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's the same thing. You know, we have our hero and or where it's somebody like this or we might have let's do another shot here the same type of shot and it doesn't need to be the the, the hero of the story it, it could be the villain of the story as well in terms of what we're trying to do It might even been this set here. It might have it could be the the evil queen where she's here. We were talking about simple lines. Just keep it simple. Keep it simple. She is talking. Ha 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 ha. It's, it's, it's that shot. And if you need to change your drawing a little bit, we want to distort this shot a little bit. Let's just do the queen only here. 
you could use your digital tools to change that too to get that that shot or and we could do that same type of thing with the evil queen and just fill her in let's get some gray in there We can do that same type of thing. You're looking menacing, you know, and uh, if she's not looking menacing enough, just, just raise her up in that frame. Because we're, we're looking at that eye level and we want her to be, we want to be lower. So if that eye level is down here, you have that eye level, we could, we could raise her up. make her more more menacing you know we make her more menacing of what we're trying to do so if she's she's lower and we'll talk about the the the, uh, the other shot the high shot so but she wants to be more powerful so we're looking at that shot here and all we're trying to do is communicate she has the power play of what's going on here Okay, so usually, like I said, you see it with a hero shot, you see it with your villains. Um, you can be subtle with something like this or, or super extreme in terms of how, the, how that uh, tilt of that camera is going. Um, and you know, it doesn't need to be just a character, the actor. It, it might be a, a building. It might be a, a fancy car. It, you can make the car look powerful if you got, you know. So you have a a, a movie like Christine, and the you know, uh, and the car is the is the character in the whole film. You, you would want that car to be massive, take up the frame, uh, those type of things, uh, to evoke that this uh, this is the, the the villain of the story, and uh, you can have fun with that. So, okay. So I hope we got that. Let's talk about the other angle that we're talking about. We're going to talk about the high angle. So um, let's get our drawing back over here. We have our red. So let's talk about that high angle. And that's going to be different. So if you have your camera here, the camera is higher in shooting down at the subject. Okay, so the subject will be smaller. So as we're looking at the picture, the camera is up here. Let's just say I have a horizon line here. The camera is lower. The person's here, just lower in terms of what we're trying to see. Um, when it goes to these types of shots, um, it, 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 they go in tandem. Uh, you want something to look bigger and something to look weaker. So uh, a, a low shot and a high shot will be in the same, uh, they sort of have the same yin and yang, they work together. And if you look at a movie, you're usually going to see that. You're going to see uh, the uh, let's just say the the villain has got the upper hand on the hero, and 
you're going to have the, that low, low angle shot of the hero looking at the villain. The villain's going to be massive and overpowering. And that's where that low angle shot helps. And then as the villain looks at the hero, um, you'll see the high angle shot making that the hero looks weaker at that time. And, and in a lot of films and, and great blocking and staging and how you're putting together your shots, uh, you'll watch a seek, you know, you'll watch a, a scene and the scene will be, you'll watch each of the characters um, go from their power moment to their moment of weakness, or maybe they go back to the power again. So, you know, doing your film studies and watching your films, you'll see these in action. But these are all the, um, the, 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 the typical things that we're going to see in these uh, storyboards. And then what we're doing is we're trying to recreate that. Uh, you'll, you'll see that a lot in Hitchcock or a film or whatever you're watching to see that process in there. So it's interesting to watch. I, when I'm um, researching films, uh, maybe it's a film I've seen a bunch of times and I'm just doing a, just doing a, a study. I'm always wanting to learn. Uh, we were talking about uh, uh, every every stream we've talked about is having that sketchbook. I'll just have my sketchbook out and don't forget that shot or don't forget that shot or that shot if you know that uh, uh, scene um, evoked a certain emotion. How do I recreate that? So I keep that mental memory. I have it written down in my in my uh, sketchbooks to sort of how how, do, how am I going to place that? So when I'm working with a director or we're with a client, I can uh, boom just pull out those records, that muscle memory or the notes I had taken to go, okay, that, that's, that's what we're, we're trying to do on this scene. We're just trying to communicate. Uh, today I had a couple of people reach out to me and said, just keep it simple, keep the drawing simple as we're moving along. So I'm not gonna put a lot of detail and stuff and just sort of give you the basics of how, how do we get those shots together. Um, so let's, let's draw that shot again and sort of have that shot set up here. So let's um, get my black. So I, I, I want to see that, that inferior, you know, I want to see that weakness, you know, from that high angle shot. So if, I, so if it's a fight or something like that, I'm going to shoot, let's just say I have some, some grid lines here and I'm up higher and I'm going to see those characters, even if it's my heroes. They're going to be here, and they're going to look weaker. And you know, even if I was just doing it over over the shoulder of the villain, and the villain is mass, you know, even bigger, and the villain's right here. You know what I mean? He's encompassing everything here, and the team is all together trying to to battle. You know. That particular character and when you're storyboard I'm just trying to put things together keeping it really loose you know he might even have a it could even be a crowd scene all the people are weak you know what I mean and our, our, our villain is there right there looking at us darken him up because he's in shadow and he's just gonna look massive And it's just that now you have the, the smaller, weaker, and that, that camera is shooting down. And um, you can see that weakness of that particular character in terms of what we're trying to do. So um, what you're trying to do is like between these shots, like this shot here that we're talking about with the high angle, and then you were looking at the low angle. So this, this character is looking massive, ready to go, whether it be the hero or the villain, you know, and then you sit there and you have that opposite shot of the high angle shot, uh, you know, having there, you, you're just trying to create imbalance in the shot. And depending on how your story goes and is, how, how do I make that all work together um, to tell the story? How, how do I have these heroes become, uh, you know, how do I get them from being in the position of weakness into uh, that low angle shot so they have the power and the villain has been uh, destroyed you know whether it be something uh, let me turn these off here 
let's try that again. Let's let's just say like the uh, the let's just say that the uh, the villain lost. So we take that low that uh, that low angle shot. Create another here. And create that so uh, we'll just see how we're gonna do this here maybe the the villain just got beat I was thinking of Ming the merciless merciless and the villain just got beat he's down here heroes beat him up in terms of what he's doing he's He's done, he's over, you know, we're looking at this. And our hero team is in the is in the power play now. So it would just be the reverse of that shot. doing their superhero pose or whatever it might be. We told you what to do. So that gives you an example there of, of what we're trying to talk about there. So another variation of the, the high angle shot is gonna be, throw this on there. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the, It's going to be the aerial the aerial shot so what the aerial shot and think of it as like your drone shot or something like that um, how would we represent that aerial shot it's the same type of high angle shot it does look it gives you a little bit different feeling in terms of what you're trying to tell the story with um, you'll usually see it like um, These are just some simple perspective lines. Let's just say um, we have a mass of land and our characters. We'll talk about composition again too uh, in one of these uh, live streams. But let's just say that this character is on a mission or whatever. But it's it's that it's that aerial shot that's giving you, you know, what does the landscape look like? What is what is the, what is the peril of this particular character? What's going on? You know, uh, how it's going. You'll see these aerial shots in huge epic battle scenes or whatever it might be. So here is here is this aerial shot. What we're doing it's, it's the same thing like a high shot let's just say uh, my son's been watching a lot of uh, Jeremiah Johnson with Robert Redford over here so let's just say um, he's going down the stream it's just you're, you're, you're up against the elements the element is the character of what we're trying to do and uh, We have we have our, our our trees and our forest. That's here. In terms of what we're trying to do, and and it's him against the elements of what we're doing here, and it maybe in the way back you have your mountain range, you know. But it's it's that aerial shot showing that. Um, the thing with the aerial shot too, it just could be showing you. Um, just the environment itself. Um, you're just getting a bird's eye view. Maybe we're, we're showcasing, um, you know, uh, establishing an environment. Uh, you know, we're trying to, to get the landscape. Uh, we're just trying to, to, to give more information to our audience of what we're trying to do. Hence more here.
No whether it might be, you know, it, we, we were talking about it before. Maybe that shot we were talking about is, uh, we were talking about Vegas or something like that in our last conversation. And it's just that, that same type of thing. You know, maybe it's a, uh, I'm trying to think of something else here. It's just that aerial shot, you know, we're just looking at the city that never sleeps. We have all the palm trees in Vegas. We're just trying to, 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 to show the environment. What is it, you know, what, what's going on? You know, maybe it was that we were, we're, we were talking about before, we are talking about the Vegas, maybe it was that Vegas sign. The sign was here. Welcome. Las Vegas, whatever it might be, but that's that's sort of the what we're trying to do. We're just trying to settle up the environment of what we're trying to to do, and that's where those aerial shots will come in. You're just trying to establish that environment of what you're trying to do. So right now we've talked about, like I said, the low angle, the high angle, and then uh, let's talk about the overhead shot. That would be our next shot that we're going to be talking about. So the next shot, like I said, is the overhead shot. This is where this shot is, let's just say, the camera, here's our, here's our uh, character here. The camera is literally going to be right over shooting that particular subject or whatever it might be. And that's what the overhead shot is. And you can do a lot of different things with that overhead shot, maybe you're, for whatever you're trying to, to, to communicate with it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's called the bird's eye view um, in terms of what you're looking at. Um, if you're doing something uh, that there's a lot of power or other motifs to it of that, you know, you think about what, what is the, the environment that the, the character is in, what are they dealing with? And uh, you get a different sense of uh, complex moments uh, when you're looking at that overhead shot, you know. So uh, let's just say we're, we're doing a horror movie or it's a crime, a crime thr thriller. It's going to be very impactful if you're sitting there and you're seeing a shot of that particular character. is just they just say he's gone that's that's a huge impactful shot when that camera is looking over at that particular character in a 90 degree you know right over that top of that character going oh my gosh what just happened you know we don't know what's happening you know we just see it all going on right there so what happened This is what we're trying to do. What we're doing is sort of rough thumbnailing out. We're just sort of working through those shots of what we're trying to do. Let's continue looking at that bird's eye view, that uh, over the head shot. Let's see what else we can do with that too. Appreciate everybody watching. I'm trying to see if there's any questions or anything like that anybody has. Let me see here. I hope we're all getting something cool out of this. I 
Okay, now I can see all the text messages. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Ronnie's there. Uh, Deep Mondal is there. Hi, how you guys doing? Uh, I got Maria's on. Um, it's, uh, your explanation is clear, clear. Cool, thanks, Ronnie. I appreciate it. Ronnie stated uh, your ex uh, explanations are clear and concise so far, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. It's sort of like you're talking in a box. I, I don't get to actually talk to you guys face to face, so uh, it's a one way stream on this one. So it makes it sort of interesting. Uh, is this similar? Uh, go overhead. Yeah. So the overhead shot, uh, I don't know, understand your question, Maria. What if you can ask a different way? Is this similar? Go overhead. Okay. Keep the questions coming. I'll keep peering over now that I can see them. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about one more shot for that overhead shot. Um, let's just say you can give a lot of description to things too with overhead shots. Let's just say, um, trying to think of a shot in my mind that we can do, utilize for this. Um, Where it's a 90 degree shot. Usually it's horror movies, those type of things. Um, trying to think real quick what else we can do for overhead shot. Um, you know, the other thing for overhead shot too, maybe we just want to see that character. Uh, we were talking about the tables, the poker tables. Here's the, the roulette wheel in terms of what we're doing. The roulette wheel spinning on the table. You have the one character here. Spinning them. The balls going around and around and around on the roulette table. I guess you have your boards here. And it's just that deep tinking. In terms of what you're doing. However it might be. And here's the roulette table. Here, here's our character. Uh, maybe they lost. And uh, they're just... They're over here where they're betting. Looking over and that's where that overhead's going. Maybe there's all sorts of people watching the win or whatever. So anyways, that's where those overhead shots uh, will work great. Um, overhead shots, um, uh, I, th I think I understand what you're asking, Maria. Um, when you're planning, um, uh, let's just say you're planning a complicated sequence, um, usually it's called uh, mapping. You're going to make a map grid of where everybody is set up. Um, so but what I'm talking about is for filmmaking and creating your shot um, that you're trying to tell a story with. Um, you can do different movements or zoom in, zoom out um, into the shot. Um, it, it's, it's very impactful if, uh, let's just say you have an overhead shot and you're setting up that, that scene and there's a scene there where you're just looking down at the body or whatever you know, that's on the floor. Uh, usually you see a lot of those overhead shots in horror or if you're trying to show distance or show that in the, in the shot to tell your story. Um, a, a lot of times what I'll do is when it comes to planning a, a storyboard sequence, I'll sit there and I'll draw out, like let's just say it's that roulette table and that is here and I'll be okay cool and then I'll grab okay here's here's uh, one character here that character is here and then uh, maybe I'll just go in and get, grab some different characters and you're sort of creating like a not necessarily a topographical map but you're mapping where all the people are in relationship uh, maybe this is our, our main character here. Uh, this is one of the dealers there. Um, get another color. And maybe these are just bystanders watching as a group over here. So we have 
three distinct different areas. And the question might be is like, if I'm gonna take this main character here in my mapping, I'm gonna sort of route the path that that person might take in the shot. This is not part of my storyboard, but this is part of my thinking process of how am I going to move this character around the board. And uh, you know, here's his pathway out of, the, out of the room or whatever it might be to go into another table that's over here somewhere. So I'll figure out all that mapping. Usually do this for complex scenes, fight sequences, car chases, uh, those type of things where you're gonna figure out where are they at? Because when you're sitting there drawing and you're thinking each of those shots, now you're sitting there at eye level going, okay, how, do, how am I going to move the camera around? Because you also have your camera too. Is it going to be a ready cam? Is it going to be a mounted cam? Where, where is that camera in relationship to this? Is the camera stationary? Is the camera moving with the character? Uh, these are all the, the pre-production things that, uh, that you would be talking about. So, okay, cool. Glad we answered your question, Maria. Thanks. Awesome. Good question. Okay, so let's go on to our, our next shot that we're talking about. And this one's a, a, a really cool shot. You'll see, you see this all the time in film. It's called the Dutch Angle. Uh, Dutch Angle is a fantastic shot to convey a lot of different cool messaging in your visuals that you're creating. And... Um, You'll see it in uh, uh, horror movies a lot. Uh, you'll, you'll see it, uh, or, or it's like uh, if somebody's uh, under the influence or something like that. Um, you're, 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 you're creating a skewed uh, position, and what you're doing is you're moving the horizontal line. We usually see the horizontal line like this. When you're filming a shot, you're getting straight ahead, and what happens is, is when you're you're going into the Dutch angle. The Dutch angle will actually oops, will tilt. And you'll have that sort of tilt in terms of what you're doing. And it could be the way that the, the characters are talking or whatever it might be. Maybe this character maybe this character is sitting there talking. Hey, whatever you might be might be saying. It just it just creates a interesting. You'll see this in a lot of uh, Mission Impossible movies or whatever else, and they'll they'll be talking about these these Dutch angles. So if I have this Dutch angle of that character, we'll we'll take that that line there, drop it the other way, and uh, make it more intense with the other character. This character is right here, has some glasses. Hey, I don't believe that, da -da 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 -da. you know, whatever it might be. And it, it, it just, and where all your shots are on that tilt angle, uh, you'll usually see uh, the Dutch angle a lot in horror movies. So uh, whether it be the the, the uh, xenomorph from aliens or the predator whatever it might be uh, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of that or your typical horror movies because you're what you're saying is you're communicating to the audience not everything's okay uh, you could use it for a different you know uh, the environments not okay we're off kilter we're not normal um, you know uh, you can create an intent or tension like we we're just showing about and I know a lot of the uh, uh, Tom Cruise movies and the Mission Impossible if you really pay attention you'll see those those Dutch angles really popping you know and and it's and, and, and the, the camera will, will start cutting in closer and closer and closer or do a cutaway uh, and uh, we're gonna go blow something up or something or uh, you know, uh, Tom Cruise's character is uh, trying to get away and he's trying to figure out how to get out of the situation and he figures something out, but it'll, it'll keep intensifying those shots. So it, it's pretty cool um, in terms of what we're talking about. Okay, let me see what else, anything else? Um, oh, we were talking about horror movies and things like that. Um, 
Let me get back over here. So it, it's that off kilter as the creature is coming for the main character. whether it be a zombie or whatever it might be. It's just, everything is off kilter. And let's just say we'll play around with that zombie metaphor. Just things are off. And that's where that Dutch angle is happening. Um, and that's what you're playing around with. Okay, cool. Let's keep moving on. Okay, and the rest now, so this is sort of our angle shots, but let's start talking about the height of the camera in terms of what we're talking about for um, angles and heights of the camera. Um, usually most shots that we see uh, for a character are at eye level. That's how we communicate with each other. Uh, when you're watching a movie, um, you're trying to get that experience. What is what does the character feel? Uh, if I was that character, what what are you what are you seeing? Uh, a, a lot of those uh, uh, things that it's the most common used, uh, probably uh, height lower. You know, eye level shot is probably the most common shot used. Um, it doesn't impose anything. Um, these are the shots you're showing weakness, strength. Those are the things. The um, the eye level shot is just it's, it's, it's just a relaxing neutral state shot i usually see a lot of those eye level shots um you see them in conversations uh and things like that um you'll see also the uh the next shot we'll be talking about too um you'll you'll see other things like uh i, I give an example um so those eye level shots would look something like this let's just get our our typical shot here Nothing fancy, but it's just that, that typical shot in, in that eye level shot. We, we just want to communicate, maybe the, the, the character is communicating right here, but that's, that's all we're looking for. It's just that eye level shot. We just got that shot coming right here. We're focusing right there in that shot. Maybe it's just a conversation. Like I said, it's the number one shot used in most films uh, in terms of what you're doing. Then you have those extremes where you're focused on the eye, sh the eye level shot, and uh, that's where a lot of, uh, if you watch uh, a film, something like Ferris Bueller, or um, a film like, uh, I'm trying to think who else, um, I think it would be uh, Mike Myers uh, type of films or something like that, uh, with the uh, Austin Powers, or uh, I think that the, the, the We'll use red on this one. The other one I think about all the time. I'm a big Ryan Reynolds fan. So, uh, you know, if I'm looking at something like a Deadpool, he'll, he'll, he'll break that fourth wall all the time and tell his little banter jokes, <laughs> whatever it might be. And stuff, so you'll see that and that those 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 shots will usually you'll see that all the time where it's uh you'll see that uh at that eye level shot i don't know if i drew justice to that character but there you go um but that you'll see that uh that character break the fourth wall a lot in terms of, and what we mean by breaking the fourth wall is since they're at eye level, they're just looking at you as the audience and having that conversation. Uh, usually you don't see that in films 
the film is encased, those characters are within that world. They're inviting you to sort of be a, a purveyor in that world. Uh, when they break the fourth wall, they're talking to you, the audience. And like I said, usually uh, Ryan Reynolds with his banter as, as he's playing the character of Deadpool will just break that fourth wall and have that conversation with you. Uh, but there's a lot of films that do that. So um, but that's with that eye level shot. And sort of what we're looking at here is, is what we're talking about with the height of shots. We were talking, and what we're talking about again is we're looking at that camera. Is right there. Here's our subject. This is where we're shooting them. In terms of what we're doing, and so with that camera, get some red on here. We're talking about the eye level. So if I'm moving my camera and I'm the cameraman, we're just sort of looking at that camera right here. Let me get this off there. And we're shooting right here. Okay? So the next um, one we're going to talk about is the shoulder shot. So the shoulder shot. Let's just say is right here. So what that camera is doing is that camera is moving now. And what we're doing is we're, we're sort of starting here. We're going to go up and down. And we're going to get different images as we move that camera up and down the, the, the character of what we're doing or whatever the, the subject that we're shooting. You know, that camera is, is, is um, giving you a different uh, look into what we're trying to do. You know, like I said, if we're doing a... Let's just say it's that, that head shot, you know, the eye shot. We're just looking at that shot right here. It's a conversational shot. We're going to have that shot here. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be about the head is right here. And that's what we're doing. Okay. And if we're going to do the next shot, which is the shoulder shot, let's just say, is here, we're going to see a little bit more shoulder in terms of what we're talking about here. So we're going to see a little bit more shoulder. And what that camera is doing is that camera is moving down, boom, to get that shot. And you might have a little bit of tilt in it, it gives you a sort of artificial upshot or whatever, but it, as you tilt that camera, but it's right there and that's the type of shot you're gonna get. Usually with the, uh, the shoulder, shoulder level shots, uh, a lot of your conversations, um, we're talking about that over the shoulder shot uh, earlier and sort of just small shots with that. Is just here. There, there's one character here. This character. There's a table. The other character is right here. We're talking this way, and then we would we would swap it back the other way. So that character is here, and then we would talk. And you can do all different shots from there, where it might be a close up of the ear, and I'm talking to that same person right here. So um, you would just have the, that banter of those shots. Um, going back and forth, but that's what the shoulder level shot would be. You'll have to forgive me here, I didn't draw this properly. It should be something like, I should see the shoulders of that particular character. So I always want to see that above the shoulder in terms of what we're doing. Maybe they're having a conversation here. So, but that's what we're trying to do with that. Um, Cool. If there's any other questions, just please shoot away. I'll take a second here and there just to say hi. Okay. Um, sometimes, sometimes you see uh, those over-the-shoulder shots. It might be a funny shot. Let's just say our character is here. It's an over-the-shoulder shot, so that character is right here. And you can show size, okay? Well, let's just say, play around with the uh, Deadpool scenario. There's Deadpool, okay? He's walking to a doorway, and maybe that other character is right here. So you can have some fun with those over-the-shoulder shots. 
you could actually see the size of a character, you know, right in front of him. So if this was the secondary character where Deadpool is, and this is where that over the shoulder shot would be interesting. She can do something like that. So this character is trying to walk through this doorway. And then we got Deadpool. Whoops. right here. And he's like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? Hey buddy, how you doing? So you can have a sort of fun with that. Um, so that's what the, the, the shoulder shot. Um, you'll usually also see the over the shoulder shot. I think I had a little drawing here, I did. Where I was, I was looking at. Let's talk about that shot again over the shoulder shot. I just left myself some notes to talk about stuff. Over, over the shoulder shot would be like, let's just say I have a character right here. And uh, he's here. Let's just say he's right here. And let's just say he's got his main squeeze. So you see this uh, in a lot of romantic films and things like that. This character will be over there. And it'll be that over-the-shoulder shot. You'll see it in a lot of romance comedies and things like that. And that's sort of how you have that over-the-shoulder shot from there. Okay, continuing on with our shots for height and angle. There's just a couple more left. We'll go through this real quick. Okay, so uh, for the, the next this next one I'm going to be talking about um, is going to be the, the shoulder. The next one's going to be the hip. Um, the hip shot, you usually see a lot of that. Oops, what happened here? You'll see the hip shot. You'll see the the hip little, hip level shot. You'll you'll see a lot of that. Uh, it is it, it all derived from the western, because in a western we'd want to see what's going on, right? So if the cowboy was right here. And he has his gun belt. And he had his holster here with his pistol right here. You would see this type of shot. So you'd see this type of shot, and this is where the help level shot goes. So if this was the uh, one character, you can see how fast we're drawing. This is like when you're just quickly storyboarding, this is, this is your thinking process. A lot of these doodles never make it, but they give you the essence of what you're trying to do.
but you got the idea. Okay, here's the here's the one Western cowboy here, and maybe there's a shootout with another cowboy that's over here. Maybe he's up against Clint Eastwood, given the poncho. Tumbleweeds floating by, whatever it might be. So it, that that's sort of what we're looking at, and that's where that hip level shot, and um, that's where it drives from, and what we're trying to talk about. Let me see. Yeah, so if you pay attention to something like the good, the bad, the ugly, most of all, Magnificent Seven. Uh, whether it be the one with Eli Wallach and Yul Brenner or the newer ones with uh, Denzel Washington and Chris Pratt. And uh, you, you'll see all these different shots in play. But this usually uh, during gunfights, uh, maybe police shows, um, something detective movie or something like that. Um, you might see these type of shots in there. But this is the hip level shot. And we're still, like we were talking about, we're bringing that camera down on that character so like I said we started with the the, the the eye level shot the shoulder shot hip shot and the next shot we're going to talk about is the knee is the knee shot so remember that camera is going up and down we start the eye shoulder hip now we're going to be at the knee so what's cool about the knee the knee level um, shot itself is that it, it uh, you can do a lot with it the knee level shot you know um, you can show I, th I think the most popular one let me just draw it real quick is uh, let's see if I get this to go I think in recent time where this shot was popular was Neo, Neo in the Matrix, and, and the bullets are whizzing past him, you know. So that shot would be done because you're, you're, you're zoning in on the knee. And you can tell a lot of story right there. So if your camera is shot this way, and you're zoning in on that knee, put Neo's glasses on him real quick. But this is what we're talking about, and those bullets are whizzing by on that, what is it, on the top of the skyscraper or whatever, as Agent Smith and the agent, the, the agents are trying to get Neo. But that's where that is sort of coming from in terms of what we're talking about. If there's any questions, please shoot them off on the chat. Uh, but also, too, is um, we can follow characters. We can track them in their environment. Uh, there's a lot of films out there. That, that use the, the knee uh, as, as a focal point, whether it be uh, Forrest Gump, as, as a young Forrest learns and breaks away out of his chains of his uh, metal contraptions that was helping him to walk or whatever it might be. Um, you, you, can, you can track that, that, that person. So if I have somebody walking through a, a scene and it's their their knees here and they're just walking through, I can sort of show what this environment is. So let's just say this is their knees, this is their pants, and they're walking through that scene like this. I can, you know, have, maybe I'm at, that cas at the casino still. Here's all the people sitting down, having a good time. We're just using those basic shapes. And he's walking through the casino, you know, for what we're trying to do as you're walking through. So that character is in there. Just 
just walking through. Maybe he's wearing his jacket. So he's walking through the scene and you can track that particular character in the environment. So, okay, we're down to our final shot we're gonna be talking about tonight. And that's gonna just be the, the, the ground level shot. Um, this, this can be a pretty impactful shot. Um, this is where, here is the, where's our camera again? Get that camera, it's right here. And what we're doing, and here's the ground level. Whoops, let's get a straight line on that. Here's the ground level. And all we're doing is taking that camera and we're putting it on the floor. And we're at the foot level of whatever it might be. And you can go below, you know. So if we're showing an underground labyrinth or something like that, we can drop the camera down to show the, the hidden world underneath the floor um, in terms of what we're trying to say. Is this one a knee level? Yeah, the one I just did was the, 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 the panel I just did before was the knee level. So we're just going down the body, eye, shoulder, hip, knee, foot. And with this shot, you can have some fun. So let's go back to our So I was playing around with this shot earlier on a couple ideas that I had. Is let's just say this is a, a ground level shot. Ground level shot. Okay. And we were talking about Las Vegas or whatever, and maybe something went down big time. I'm just trying to show what's going on in Vegas. And I'm here at the ground level. And I'm just sort of storyboarding these things out real quick. This shot. So here is a. Let's get some buildings in there too. When I'm storyboarding or just thumbnailing, I'm just thinking real quick. I'm just like trying just to lay down the idea because as a story artist, you have to, you can't fall in love with these drawings. I love to draw. I love to draw cool things. And, uh, but if this isn't what we're, we're trying, this is, if this shot isn't telling the story, we want to be able to just move on. And uh, you might have to reiterate it, whatever it might be. So let's just say this is a, a scenic shot. I'm The camera is down at the bottom on the ground. I'm looking off into the distance. You have some fun with this one. Nevada has all these cool mountains. Oops. We'll throw another color underneath that. Get a bigger brush, and this stuff doesn't need to be complicated. And here's the here's the the mountains. of Nevada. Okay. And let's just say something happened. There was a big explosion or something crazy like that. So let's add another layer in there. Maybe the villains took out something out there. Just 
Make sure. Let me go back to my. How we're doing here? We're looking pretty good. Cool. So let's just say. Oops. What happened? Shrink that down. Maybe there's just a big explosion. Something happened in Vegas. Something blew up. But anyways, you get the idea. And this is uh, the, the level foot shot there too. Um, this would be the, the, the ground level shot. This would be the worm's eye view. Uh, you can see that too in other films. Let's go back in. Let's just say there's a shot here. And maybe that shot So of, of the character's feet. And we're down here, and maybe we see the cellar pipes or something as the camera sort of. And we're talking more movement, but maybe there's something going on over here. And the, the camera is panning down, and maybe down underneath the, the floorboards or whatever, there, there's maybe a, a special gambling game or something like that underneath. And that's where that foot level shot, you'd start there, and then you'd drop the camera down to show what was actually going on underneath the floorboards. Uh, of there, maybe there's a you know a special poker game going on down there. And this is the type of stuff we're doing. We're drawing really simple, and we're just keeping it going. So uh, again, it's what is it, twelve twenty one. Got to be at work early tomorrow morning, but I uh, just wanted to have some time to hang out with you guys, have some fun. So again, just sort of wrap up real quick. We talked about you know our our heights and we talked about um, talked about our heights and our angles of what we're trying to do uh, we're trying to evoke emotion with the shots we did we kept it pretty simple today um, we talked about uh, low angle high angle the overhead shot we talked about uh, the Dutch angle that was pretty cool um, we talked about uh, the height of the camera going from the eye level to the shoulder level, to the hip, the cowboy shot there, down to the knee, and then down to the foot. Um, so we can take all these things that we're talking about and start putting all these things together. Uh, like I said, the simplification of your drawings, your basic shot knowledge uh, from an extended wide shot to an extreme close-up shot. Now you have some, uh, some heights and angles to play with. Uh, the next thing we'll probably get into is either going to be our lenses or we're going to get into the movement of the camera. How do we move within that shot? How do we explain a movement in a shot in a storyboard as well? Uh, that one will take a little bit more time because it's a little bit more complicated in, in terms of how, how do I storyboard that? How do I give that, that direction of what we're trying to do? Again, I appreciate everybody who's joined us tonight. If we caught us uh, on the replay, we appreciate you watching there too. Um, and we'll try to do this again uh, sometime this week. I think the communication through Instagram has been great for folks. So if you're getting that information and you're jumping on uh, to my YouTube channel, this is a budding YouTube channel talking about storyboarding. And you can use the, the storytelling uh teachings that we're talking about and discussions that we're having, you could use that for your animations. You could use that for your comics. You can use that for your video production, your filmmaking, whatever it might be. There's a lot of parallels to, the, to uh, all the uh, creative abilities that you can do with storyboarding. Um, I, I tend to do, most of my stuff is for feature film in terms of what I'm doing. I've done a lot of music videos and things like that, uh, short films, indie films, uh, video games, and things like that. But uh, I enjoy 
filmmaking, and I hope you enjoy these lessons. I hope you're getting some great value out of it. Again, please, if you haven't uh, subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do. I appreciate it. Please subscribe. It lets me know that you're interested and that you'd like to see more content uh, coming through the live stream or possibly a video uh, that we really focus a lot more detail into the topics that we're covering. Give me a like. Please give me a comment. I'd appreciate all the comments and feedback. Uh, I appreciate everybody commenting on the live chat too. I will see you in the next live stream. And I appreciate you being here. You have a great night. Take care.